speaker, it's because the reality is we still don't understand why they think the representative of a teacher's union or of a nurse's union is more qualified and in a better position to represent the views of Canadians than the ones that they elected themselves. It's because we stand for democracy on this side of the house. We stand for better representation. We're so proud to oppose the motion that this house reserves seats in the legislature of representatives for major national labor unions. <laughs> what am I doing here today as a second opposition speaker? First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take a look at everything that we've heard from side team proposition so far. I'm going to deal with all their analysis, and I'm going to jump back into the opposition case. I'm going to show you how this creates further inaccurate representation and why we think that's actually harmful. So firstly, Min came up here and she talked to you about the nature of the House of Commons. Right? Specifically, she said, oh, well, we think that labor unions and their workers, we want them to have representation. Yes, we absolutely agree. That's why we think that MPs exist, right? They're there to represent the population. They're there to represent the region that they're the MP of. We think that's why parties like the NDP exist. We think they're the, they're the type of party that represents these types of blue-collar workers, union workers. We think that's why they exist in the first place. We think that if labor unions are such a big part of our population, like they told you, their voice would be big enough to get the parties who advocate for their rights and their issues into the House of Commons. We don't understand why we need specific people from labor unions in order to achieve this. We think that that one falls. The second idea was on this whole idea of perspective. They told you specifically that unions are going to be in a better position to represent people and vote on specific issues as compared to MPs. No, we think that's flawed. We think that all the benefits that they brought up already exist in the status quo because MPs already exist to represent the issues of their population. But furthermore, we think that like, in terms of um, personal views, we think they're already represented in the House of Commons through these MPs. But moreover, when we're talking about bills and um, like laws that concern labor unions, we're obviously going to co consult these labor unions before we move forward with this. Would you not agree? Okay, Kevin, wouldn't you agree that there's actually no tangible harm to having a diversity of perspectives? Well, madam, we don't have a problem with diversity of perspectives, but what we think is these people aren't in the best position to advocate for certain things. We think that teachers, you know, if we're having an education bill, we think they're absolutely beneficial, but we don't understand why they're in a good position to advocate for things like foreign policy, to advocate for things like health care. We don't think that they're in the best position. We think that MPs are. That's why they exist in the House of Commons today. When we're talking about bills that actually concern the aspects of these labor unions, be it oil, be it healthcare, be it education, we're going to consult them. We're not going to completely just leave them out of the picture like side proposition seems to have you believe. We think that you know if you have an education bill, we're going to consult teacher unions. If we have a bill on health care, we're going to consult nurse unions. We're going to consult doctor unions. We don't think we leave them out of the picture. We just don't understand the whole analysis on why they actually need to be there. We vote on things like foreign policy. We vote on things that don't concern the labor unions. We think that's flawed. We think that MPs are obviously in a much better position to represent them. Then their, third, or their second speaker, Ashley, came up here, and she told you about this whole idea of the catalyst for change. She said that the problem with the current status quo is that we don't pay enough attention to what labor unions have to say. A couple of responses to this. Under their model, these small unions that they're so concerned about don't get represented anyway. Because their model specifically said that the number of seats they get in the House of Commons is based on the number of people they represent. If we have a small union that barely represents eight people, they're not going to have a voice in the House of Commons regardless. We think that point falls. Secondly, we think that you know labor, when we talk about labor unions, where they're going to be represented at labor forums, when we talk about issues that concern them. We talk about Aboriginal issues. We talk about those often in Aboriginal forms. So we can get specific information on if, on issues that concern them. Would you not agree? Okay, but when you have larger um, labor unions and they're trying to change legislation for themselves and for their own union and their own worker rights, does that not affect the rights of the workers in smaller unions? Well, madam, what we think is that if these labor unions are so large, they're already a large part of our population, we think that their voices are already going to be represented in the House of Commons through MPs and through these parties. We think that um, they should, these labor unions should be in a place where, you discuss, where we discuss issues that concern all of Canada. Right? We think that they should be there for their specific issues, for the issues that actually concern them, where they're in the best position to represent the, what they believe. So let's go ahead and jump into side opposition's final substantive point on inaccurate representation. So, what do we elect MPs for? We elect MPs because we want them to represent us. We want them to represent our interests. We elect them to be our voice in the House of Commons. 
Like my partner Anna said, we think it'd be great if everyone in Canada could vote on every single bill that was passed in the House of Commons, every single piece of legislation that passed in the House of Commons, so that every single Canadian was heard. Obviously, we recognize in the status quo that's not going to happen. The reality is that's why we elect MPs, it's why we elect MLAs as proxies to represent our best interests. So why is it actually harmful when we throw these labor union representatives into the mix? We think that these labor unions are there to represent one interest, right? When we talk about oil company workers, they're there to represent that. When we talk about nurses, they're there to represent their nurse union. We think that they're not in the best position. We don't think they should be there to implement health care policies. We don't think they should be there to vote on foreign policy issues because they don't know that much about them. We think that MPs who serve their entire life and they dedicate their entire life to the best interests of a certain region, of their regional needs, their regional wants, what their party believes in, we think they're in a much better position to do this as compared to labor unions. Madam Speaker, it's because we it's because we stand for better representation. It's because we stand for equality and democracy. We're very proud.